All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. Today I have a very special guest on. This is somebody who is a little bit more advanced in their career. If you can say that, you know, you can be advanced in digital marketing because it's such a, a new career path. But this is somebody who, you know, you could look to to see what's possible four, five, six years down the line in your digital marketing career. So I'm super excited to invite onto the channel Angus. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Awesome. Awesome. So what I wanted to do is basically just take it back to the beginning and just talk about your origin story, right? So before you discovered digital marketing, maybe you didn't even know what it was. Before you discovered uh, the digital career blueprint, Seth's course, uh, yeah. and Seth's content online, what were you doing? You know, what what kind of jobs were you doing? What was your life like? And, you know, how did you kind of discover that? So I'll take you back to the beginning. I started when I had left school um, well, I didn't do great in school, so going to university wasn't actually an option for me. Um, in Australia, you have sort of requirements to be able to get into university, which I didn't have. So at that point, I started out doing personal training. So I was doing that for, I think, about a year, a year and a half. So getting up early, going in, training clients at the gym, I wasn't making very much money. <laughs> and I probably, um, if I reflect back, I don't think I was overly happy with with the career that I was in. I, I was at first, but after about a year or so, I sort of realized this isn't really for me. Um, I enjoyed talking to clients. I enjoyed trying to get more clients and that sort of aspect of it. But obviously, I was looking for something different. Um, so my journey sort of started when I began looking online on other ways to make money outside of my career, which for me led me to drop shipping and trying to um, trying to basically make money online somehow. Um, long story short, that didn't work. That didn't work out. Um, but through learning drop shipping and, and sort of playing around with um, some things like that online, I had discovered that there was an, actually a career in running, you know, paid advertising for businesses. Um, and I found that really interesting at the time. So I, stumbled across um, someone's channel and I started finding all the interviews of students who had done Seth's course. And that's when I actually realized that there's a, a full career in digital marketing. And um, yeah, probably spent two or three nights just consuming as many of those interviews as I could and then pulled the trigger and, and bought the course. Wow, that's awesome. So a couple of things that I wanted to maybe like talk about or, or ask you about there. Um, I think a lot of people get into uh you know a lot of these make money online opportunities i know i did a bunch of them too and there used to be especially like five six years back you just see ads yeah. all the time a little harder to to make it profitable with ads now but you would just see ads all the time almost every video you click on there'd be some drop shipping or amazon fba or some guy with his shirt off in a golf cart uh you know telling mm -hmm. you to trade or something um but uh, yeah, so a lot of people got into that. You know, I did the same thing. I bought a ton of different courses. And, uh, you know, some people would say it's a scam or whatever, but I actually, I, I learned a lot from them. And if I didn't do those things, I probably wouldn't have been successful on YouTube because I learned so much from those things. I learned what I liked. I learned what I didn't like. And I learned some really tangible skills, even though I didn't have any success. You know, I, I wasn't like, yeah. I didn't make like a super profitable Amazon FBA store, but I learned, I learned a lot of, you know, about copywriting and just like, you know, marketing and, and just some tangible skills. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, a lot of people get into digital marketing after kind of trying some of those make money online opportunities. So, uh, that's kind of the first point I wanted to make. And then another thing is, um, you, how long have you been in, uh, doing digital marketing now? So I think it's been about six years now. Okay. Okay. So yeah, six years and you kind of started off, um, well, we'll get to that actually. So. Uh, let's talk about how you discovered digital marketing in, in Seth. So how did that happen? Yeah. Okay. And I'll even touch on the point you were saying before about the drop shipping. I thought mm -hmm. I was going to get rich. I had <laughs> done a couple of courses. <laughs> Me too. I built a store. It was, it was actually, I was making sales. I remember with one of mm -hmm. the stores in particular, and I thought I'm going to become a millionaire. I'm just going to start heaps of drop shipping stores. Um, that didn't eventuate. <laughs> and then. Obviously, I, I was looking for something else and, yeah. and found the, the course. Um, sorry, what was the question again? 
um that, yeah how did okay so you found seth's course did you yeah. so you basically knew about what digital marketing was because of drop shipping so that's what Correct. your introduction to digital that's marketing it. and then how did you remember how you found the course uh it, it was stumbling across the interviews on youtube so i think i was probably looking at i'd probably come to the realization i'm not going to come become a millionaire from drop shipping i need to look at something else um and i think i was looking up high paying careers or something along those lines that you don't need a university degree to get um and that's how i found the interviews and, and the course yeah cool so you're kind of you, you probably did you were you somebody who went to college or or did you you skip okay got you no nah, no nah. yeah yeah, yeah. i I know a lot about college in the US. I don't know that much about college in Australia, but in the US, there's a lot of college degrees that are probably not worth it. <laughs> but I, same, I know yeah. it. Okay. So it's the same in yeah. Australia. Got you. Got you. Okay. Um, so you were thinking like, I, I don't want to go through college. I don't want to rack up a bunch of debt. Don't want to pay that. Don't want to spend four or five years of my life uh, getting a degree. And so you were looking into digital marketing. Um, how uh, How was the course itself? Well, one of the things that I liked before I did the course was it wasn't selling anything crazy. So it wasn't saying you're going to get rich. I think at the time, and I believe it's still the same, it was just saying you're going to get, you know, get a 60K career, I think it was at the time, in digital marketing, an entry-level job. Um, and that's all I wanted. I just wanted to get a start and get working in an industry that had potential um, for me to take it further if I wanted to. Um, and yeah, I found the course was it was good because it wasn't, there was no um, selling in it, if that makes sense. Some, I feel like some of the courses I've done in the past, it's just you do a course and then it's just an upsell for a bigger course. This was really practical. Um, mm. It was Seth who obviously you can tell he actually had worked in the industry and he was just giving you the basics that you need to know to get an entry-level job. It was exactly what it said on the package, if you will. Um, and that's what I really liked about it. And you can do it as quickly or as slow as you want. Um, so I think some people in the course at the time had been sort of chipping away at it while they're working a full-time job. Whereas for me at the time, I had, um, since I thought I was going to get rich from dropshipping, I'd quit my personal training job. So I had a lot of free time. Yeah. And um, so I thought I'm going to get it all done in a month. I'm going to get all the course components done and then I'm going to create my own experience. And I'm just going to start applying. Um, mm -hmm. that's what I did. And so you literally were able to get a job in a month. Is that what you're telling me? It was just over a month. I'd wow. finished the course, I think within about 20 days. And then I'd already had a client or two on the side that I was just working for free. Um, just running their Google ads. It's probably like $500 a month or something that they were spending, not much, but enough for me to gain the, you know, the basics of how to run ads on the platform. Mm -hmm. And I'd obviously had a little bit of experience running, um, meta ads for the drop shipping stores. So I had a bit of, had the foundation and probably I was just naive. So I thought I'm just going to start applying. I can get a job. And um, yeah, then one of the places pretty quickly after I started applying, um, one of the guys gave me a call and that was the job, the first job that I got. And that's the same agency that I'm at today. Wow. So you, you've you been yeah. at the same agency for six years then? Yeah. So it wow. was... Um, it was the my now business partner who started the agency. He had just started it. So he was working in a global role um, doing marketing for a big technology company out of the US. And he had come to Australia. Um, and I think for whatever reason, he wanted to start his own agency. Um, so he'd only just opened the doors. And I think that's why he was open to hiring me because I didn't have the skill set, but I was young and I really wanted to learn. And obviously for him, you know, you get someone cheaper if you get mm -hmm. them with no experience um, and they're moldable. So he knew he could train me. Um, I didn't have any bad habits coming into the role. And, and mm -hmm. I obviously had demonstrated based on some of the stuff that they tell you to do in the course that I was eager to learn. I had my Google certification um, and it was very clear to him that I actually wanted the job, which I think was definitely one of the reasons why he gave me a shot. And that's one of the good things about the course. A lot of it's helps you stand out as someone who's applying um, to a hiring manager or an agency owner, because you actually already get your Google certification. You've already demonstrated that you've got some practical experience. And I think a lot of people coming into it don't realize how big of an impact that has mm -hmm. and how much it helps you stand out. 
Um, now I'm on the other side of the hiring and I see a lot of very lazy applications and I haven't seen one person yet who has, for a junior role, who has done what Seth says to do in the course. So it's, yeah. There you go. There you go right there. By the way, guys, uh, if you're super confused about what we're talking about, you, you're like, what is digital marketing? What are the different digital marketing careers? You know, how do I get into digital marketing? Is digital marketing a good choice for me? Seth does have a free training, which you can check out down in the description and the pinned comment below. So definitely click down there and check that out because that'll explain everything. Um, so let's talk. That's actually a really good point that you brought up about the hiring. Um, mm -hmm. Now you're on the other side because you are, well, we're going to get there in a moment, but you're in a pretty advanced role at this point. And so you're on the other side. You're the one who's hiring for those junior roles. And um, what Seth has people do, not to give too much away, but he basically has them prove that they know the skills because everybody says they have the skills. Everybody says that they do uh, because that's what all the you know career coaches teach people to say. It's like, yeah, just say that you have the skills, even if you don't. So everyone says they have the skills, but how do you actually prove that you have the skills? Well, you you have you know you want to do portfolio projects, and that's exactly what Seth has people do. Um, but he has him do it in a very specific way. So um, you've uh, like hired, a, I'm sure probably interviewed and hired a ton of people. And I've done the same thing, both in my corporate job back when I was working corporate. And then now that I'm actually hiring people. And mm -hmm. I would agree, like there's very few people that do, you know, portfolio projects in the way that, you know, Seth recommends to actually prove that they have the skills. So could you maybe dive into that a little bit more? Because I thought that part was very interesting. Coming from the other perspective, the other side of the table, so many people are kind of on this yeah. side of the table. They want to get a little more perspective on the other side. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, I think for, for an employer, if you're trying to, to build a business, you need people who care because you're not going to build a big business by yourself. Um, you need to have people, especially in an agency, your biggest commodity is your, your biggest asset is your, your people. Um, so you can't buy a good attitude. You can't buy someone who's actually inspired for the job. Um, but if you find it, you have to hire those people and you have to treat them well um, because they're the people where they progress very fast in their career. And if they're inspired by what they're doing, they're the people that make a long-term career out of it. So mm -hmm. what, it demonstrates when you come to an interview with your portfolio, with your Google certifications already, is you don't have to say that you have a great attitude. It demonstrates it based on your actions. Um, mm -hmm. And when you're hiring people, that's something that, I don't know if everyone looks for it, but I know myself and Mark, we definitely look for it, is has the, if the person says they want to be a manager, let's say if it's for a management role, or if, have they demonstrated that either they've already done that in a previous role or they're actively trying to learn and put things in place to step into that role. But if you say, I want to step into this role, but I haven't done anything that demonstrates that I've put any time into it before the interview, that's usually a bit of a red flag. Mm -hmm. um, so the course, you know, by, by demonstrating your experience, getting your certifications, it definitely helps you stand out, especially for a junior role because most people for a junior role, either they might have a marketing degree or some sort of a degree, um, but they come into the interview thinking they're ready for the job. But the reality is it, university degrees don't teach you the, the practical skills that you actually need to work in an agency. Um, so one of your one of the things that's going to help you stand out is that you've got a demonstrated you know, track record of learning on your own. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, really important. Do you guys care at all about a university degree when you're hiring for those roles? I wouldn't say we don't, we place no value on it. I think what a university degree shows is that you can be committed to something and you can stick something out and finish it to the end. That's, that's where we mm -hmm. look at it as a positive. But then we've also seen people with university degrees where they just can't handle the, the pressure or well, they, they mm -hmm. just, they're not, they're not up for it and, it and it doesn't have carry as much weight in this industry in particular, just because it changes so often. Um, and the universities aren't really teaching you the practical skills um, that you need in the role. So it's not something that we overly care about. If someone came with a university degree, but they didn't do any of the stuff that Seth talks about in the course versus someone with no university degree, 
that had taken those steps and gotten their Google certification and things like that, we'd hire that person unless mm. they were <clears throat> came across very bad in the interview. But nine times mm. out of ten, we'd be we'd be really interested in that person. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And I totally agree on the university thing. Like I, I'm not familiar with Australian universities, but the same thing in the U S it, it's almost impossible just because of how universities are built to, for them to keep up with what's actually working right now. They're usually yeah. teaching stuff that worked five, 10, 15 years ago, but they're not yeah. teaching the stuff that's working right now. Um, yeah. And the only way you can learn that is just by getting your hands dirty and being in the trenches basically, you know? So simple as that. Yeah. So Awesome. So you got a job in about a month. Uh, and I, everyone is probably going to want to know, you know, let's talk about the money, right? Let's talk about the money. That's, that's what everybody wants to know. So that first job uh, that you got, mm. how much was that? <laughs> and I'm talking in Australian dollars here, just for anyone who's okay. listening from the US. But the first job was, I think it was 50, 55,000, around about Australian dollars. Um, and we obviously have superannuation here. So that was inclusive of super. Um, <clears throat> so not an overly high salary at all, mm -hmm. but it was it was fair based on the fact that I had to be trained pretty much from scratch um, mm -hmm. to actually <laughs> to actually step into the role. Um, so that's where I started. Um, and then pretty well every year from that point, I progressed. I think the first sort of, Two years, I I was just learning. I probably wasn't really into it as much as I am now. So I was just sort of slowly progressing and learning. And then around year two, I, I think I was earning about 70000 to 75000 Australian dollars. Um, so that's once I'd sort of built my fundamental level knowledge. Um, and then somewhere around that point, I started taking it really seriously really enjoying working with clients. I've built some great relationships with some of our larger clients. Um, and I think my inspiration for the career actually grew over time. And mm. once that sort of kicked in, then it accelerated relatively quickly. Um, and I think around year, it would have been year three, I was thinking I can go and do this on my own. I can go and start my own agency. I'm going to, I was sort of having those, <laughs> those thoughts um, and then I had sort of come to the conclusion, I'm going to treat this agency like it's mine for a year, save as much money as I can. And at the end of that year, I'm going to be ready to go and start my own agency. Mm -hmm. um, or I was hoping that an opportunity would open up in this company for me to buy in and become a partner or start those conversations. Um, but either way, I was going to treat it like my own business. And for me, that meant going way above and beyond my job description in terms of taking care of clients, um, in terms of building out at the time a new service offering for the agency that we didn't offer and help actually sort of packaging that up and getting some of our clients doing that, um, which obviously helped grow revenue for the agency a little bit. Anyway, at the end of that year, the conversation with my now business partner, but my boss at the time, um, was raised around if I was interested in potentially partnering in the business and, and buying in. Um, and yeah, then here we are today. Did you, I'm, I'm actually curious. And if you don't want to share this, you don't have to, but who <laughs> brought that conversation up? Was it your, your, your boss and now business partner or was it, it was you? my boss? Yeah. It's my oh, boss wow. and now business partner. He, he'd, he'd raised it. I think he, we, we would have conversations sort of after work most nights, just talking about clients and the business and stuff like that because I was very interested in it so just for context at that point I was just because I wanted to I'd requested that I could you know basically look at all the books and the revenue figures because I wanted to really understand all of that um understand gross margin utilization rate of employees all that sort of stuff mm -hmm. and so we would have conversations around the business um and in one of those sort of days then yeah it got brought up Okay. One of those conversations, sorry, I should say. So maybe you were kind of hinting at, at something just a little bit, just like not saying he knew it. I wanted, hinting. He knew okay. I wanted more. He knew I wanted to push it because I was working very hard. So just for context, okay. some nights I'd be I'd be doing like 12 hour days, um, yeah. working on the weekends, not something a normal employee would do. So I, he definitely knew that I wanted more. Mm -hmm. um, or potentially he suspected that maybe I was thinking about starting my own agency. 
Yeah. So just, I guess like a little golden nugget here, just for anyone out there watching who's in a similar situation or maybe in the future is in a similar situation. Yeah. I think the great advice there was just treat it like your own business and Mm -hmm. just, just go above and beyond. And if, you know, if you want to partner with somebody, that's a pretty, pretty smart thing to do, right? Treat it like your own business, show that, that you could be a good partner and you can basically run the business on your own. And uh, I think that would be like a very, very good way to uh, get someone to to offer you that position. So uh, yeah, that's to, very smart. For, for, for the partnership position or even just to stand out in your role, maybe you don't want to buy into a business, but you just want to go up to a high level in the business. Mm-hmm. If you, you have to have some level of commercial acumen. So you have to understand what are the clients worth that I'm managing? Um, how much am I billing out at? per hour if you understand those things it changes the way you look at the business and your yeah. boss or your manager will definitely take no if you have that sort of a mindset when you're coming into your job day to day it shows you really care and mm. care about the business yeah and i mean if you're bringing a ton of value to the table i mean if let's just say if you're bringing in a million dollars worth of revenue mm. or a or million dollars worth of profit per year and you you know you're getting paid like fifty thousand. Your boss is gonna see like, okay, well, we we need to give this guy a raise, right? Because yeah. obviously, you know, they're probably not gonna stay with us long if they're bringing in that kind of value to the table. So, yeah. um, and for for me, the first time I got access to those figures, the realization was I'm actually not worth that much. That was the, that was the mm. honest truth. It was I'm actually not managing very big clients at the moment, um, and that sort of kicked my ass into gear to step up. Mm-hmm. take on more clients, um, prove that I could manage some of the bigger clients. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. So you had a, an amazing career progression and now you're actually a partner at the business and you're, you're just crushing it. So um, that's, uh, I, I don't know. Did, did you, I, I forgot. Did you give the, the kind of the figures approximately? I don't know if what, whatever you're comfortable with sharing as a partner. Yeah. So, so obviously when you, when you buy into the business for an agency, it's, um, it's going to be a little bit different. So you, you would have your salary. Um, but then obviously you you've got an equity stake in the business. So if the business is paying dividends, which if it's making money, it probably is, um, you would have your salary and then obviously, um, you would be paid out the dividends, which is just the profit that the agency makes each year. Um, so since that became, since I bought into the business, that's obviously part of my compensation now as well. Um, so it's 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 above two hundred thousand. That's awesome. And obviously, it's the the we're really lucky. We have some amazing clients that keep growing. We've got a great team. We're not the biggest agency, but we sort mm-hmm. of keep growing year on year. So obviously, that figure keeps going up, which is nice, um, and it's quite quite rewarding. That's awesome. Do you want to give a shout out to the agency? There might be some business owners watching this. Who knows? Uh, yeah, sure. It's uh, <laughs> Be Found Digital is the name. Awesome. Okay, Be Found Digital. Check it out, especially if you're uh, Australian <laughs> or in or in that area. Um, that's awesome. Okay, so uh, okay, so basically, what would you say to somebody who? is kind of in the same situation you were in. They're kind of, you know, on the fence. Maybe they're trying a bunch of make money online opportunities out and they're not having any success. And, you know, it it might just simply be because it, it's a skill issue in many cases, right? You just don't, you simply don't have the skills yet uh, to, to have success in, in business, but you can yeah. attain those skills. And the crazy thing is you can literally get paid to learn these skills because most people all across the world, they pay money to learn in-demand skills. That's that's how colleges work. That's how boot camps work. Is you pay a yeah. tremendous amount of money to learn in-demand skills. But what you know, Seth and people, you know, Seth and I, we like to flip that paradigm on its head. And we like to basically say that you're going to get paid to learn these in-demand skills, right? Because there's certain careers out there where it's it's in demand and there's only one way to learn the skills, which is just getting your hands dirty, being in the trenches. And colleges just simply can't keep uh, compete or keep up with that. And so what would you say to somebody like that? Yeah, I would say if, well, probably two things. One, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So I know a lot of the get make money online things are, you might get, I gained really valuable experience from getting sort of caught up in that. Um, but where I really started to make progress was when I focus on one thing. I just vote, I'm going to get a job. 
And then when I get the job, for the first two years, like I said, I was enjoying it, but I probably wasn't taking it that seriously. Um, but once I started going, I'm going to put all of my energy and focus into my career and I'm going to try and make it as successful as I can. I'm going to work hard. And I just want to be the best that I can. Um, that was when I really started to, to make actual progress. Um, mm. So focus on one thing. And for me, that meant cutting out the distractions. So I stopped trying to dabble in Amazon FBA and drop shipping and trying to pick up clients on the side of my job to supplement my salary. I thought I'm going to make the sacrifice to put everything to the side and I'm just going to give this one thing a really good crack and I'm going to give it a year. I'm going to see what happens. And if I don't see the results that I want based on the amount of time and effort and love that I'm putting into it, I'm going to change direction. Um, but I think staying focused on one thing is, is really, really important. I've, that would probably be my advice that no one really told me that at the time, but upon reflection, that helped me quite a lot. Got it. And one thing I actually forgot to ask you about, um, I was supposed to ask before this, but tell me about kind of job satisfaction. What What is your job satisfaction like doing digital marketing versus before when you were doing other jobs? It's, um, I think it's quite, as a career, it's, it's quite fast paced. If you are, I know it's a bit of a cringy word, but it is mm -hmm. quite, you'll always be learning something new. Um, and you obviously get to work, the benefit of working in agencies, you get to work with different types of businesses. Um, and so that's quite fun. It's quite varied work. Um, and if you're in the right type of agency where you get to work with the right type of clients, it can be really, really rewarding because you get to actually have a material impact on that client's business. Um, you know, some of the clients were, we started working with them and they were quite small companies and now they're national businesses. Um, and we still have, you know, relationships with the owners and we've been able to see their business grow. And obviously they appreciate what we do and they trust us. Um, and we obviously love working with them and that's, it's just great. I like the idea of an agency because it just makes so much sense because if they tried to hire somebody in house, there'd be certain trends that happen and what what's working now isn't necessarily going to work like a year or two from now. But when you're yeah. working with a bunch of different businesses, when some kind of trend changes, you're quickly going to figure out what works. Right. Yeah. So that that's kind of one of the big value propositions of, of working with an agency. So that makes a lot of sense. And so and you're you, really on top of trends and how they change when you work for an agency. And you got to, you got to deliver when you're in an agency. Um, mm -hmm. so it, it definitely develops a different type of mindset, which whether you want to stay in, in, in an agency or take it elsewhere, it's very valuable. Um, mm -hmm. at least my observation has been people who have had agency experience since in an agency, you're being paid to deliver a result most of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, so you, you get stuff done quickly. You can think on the fly, you know, how to solve problems. Um, and I think you're just overall a lot faster. If there's something that needs to be done, you'll get your hands dirty and you'll do it. Um, whereas if at least my observation, sometimes people on the brand side, um, they don't have that, but mm. the benefit of being in a brand is you get a talk, you get an interface with clients. You get to have more of an understanding of the product that you're selling, mm. your clients pain points, and that can really help too. But having some level of a stint working in an agency will benefit you hundred percent, no matter where you want to take your career. Yeah, I, I agree. And one thing I look for in hiring is people who've either worked for agencies or are actual agency owners. Sometimes I'll actually hire agency owners um, on my team. So yeah, that's I, I agree with that. Um, awesome, man. So is there anything um, that I should have asked you, but I didn't about digital marketing? Uh, maybe something around the types of roles. So I know when I first started, there was or Seth would talk in the course about the different types of roles you can get into. So maybe that might be helpful to people who are listening. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What are some of the, the roles that are easier to get into at an entry level in digital marketing? Yeah. yeah. At the moment, and this might change over time, but at the moment, def if you're going into a paid role or in a paid digital agency, um, definitely paid search is still probably the foundational skill set, which is going to help you get into most jobs. Um, so learning how to do Google ads and Microsoft ads, and you know, that is definitely your grounding. Um, that's going to be the easiest sort of skill set to have on your resume that is going to be likely to get you a job. I've actually heard people say that even though they ended up getting an SEO job or a, or a content job, the thing that got them the job was the paid search experience. 
So even yeah. if they're hiring for a role that's not even there, there's just like having people with paid search experience, maybe as a on the back burner or something like they're thinking of like, you know, promoting them in the future or something like that. So and the reality is and it depends on if it's a B2B or a direct consumer brand, but most companies spend the majority of their marketing budget on Google search, mm-hmm. whether that's the best use of their spend or not. I've got some opinions about that but a lot, that's just mm-hmm. the reality a lot of companies spend a lot of money on google search and they don't even question it and i'm talking some clients you know it's hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars a month that they'll spend on search um so it's definitely a skill set that it's in demand just by nature of the way that the media spend goes out with most most companies makes a lot of sense so yeah. before we end it, and by the way, guys, free training, free digital marketing training. We can learn a lot more than, about this down in the description in the pin comment below. So before we end it, um, is there any just like last moment? Like, is there one piece of advice uh, that you could give to someone trying to, to get in? What's like the most important uh, advice for someone trying to get in? Just do the course, <laughs> do the course. <laughs> and then, well, don't just do the course, do the course and then do the practical experience component. Um, and get creative with it. I think a lot of people got stuck on that from memory. Maybe it's because I'm not the brightest tool in the shed. I just didn't even think about it and I just did it. Um, and in hindsight, that really helped me. So you might find you've got a family member who has a business. You could run the ads for them for free. Just mm-hmm. having that on your resume, you can make it look like you've freelanced for that business. The agency is never going to ask you about that. Um, so just get started and don't overthink it. If you're genuinely interested, um, you know, if, if you're on the fence, but you go, this looks really interesting, just do it and give it a crack. That's awesome. All right, Angus, yeah. thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate your time. I know you're busy working on a Saturday morning uh, for, your, for your business and for your uh, partnership. So thank you so much for coming on. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll have you on again here in a few years so we can catch up and see see where you're at. No worries. Sounds good. Thanks, Shane.